If I had a business and I wanted to create a killer landing page to get more sales or leads, this is exactly what I would do. Because after creating over 400 landing pages in over 80 different niches, I've learned all the ins and outs of creating a landing page. And so in this video, I'll show you exactly what you need to do in order to build a high converting landing page for your business. Step number one, getting the fundamentals right. Do not make the mistake that most people make with their landing page, which is throwing a bunch of random sections all together with generic text, images that have no correlation to their product or service or offering, and not putting any real thought whatsoever into how their landing page will actually work and where their traffic is coming from. Instead, start by getting really deep to understand your customer's pain points, their needs, their wants, their goals, their dream outcome, and their motivations. I recommend actually writing this down, and this is something we do all the time at our agency in the form of deliverables called user personas and journey maps. This is basically where we map out how does a user go from the moment they think of a solution to the moment that they land on the landing page or website to the moment that they actually come up with the decision. This will help you really empathize with your customers and also create pages that convert substantially higher than industry average. Also understand that the way you frame your landing page will be very different depending on your traffic source and the awareness level of your customers. For someone coming from meta ads, they're going to be more in that unaware or problem aware stage, in which case your landing page needs to focus on educating, building trust and building rapport quickly, and also communicating the key value of your offer. Compare that to somebody coming from Google ads or even organic SEO, like many of our own landing pages at Thrillex, in which we rank on the first page of Google. These people are way more solution aware and they may actually already be ready to buy, in which case your landing page can be a lot more direct, like our page, which has the form right at the very top for immediate lead capture. But the rest of the page should still be focused on those value prop sections, building trust and credibility, and having social proof and communicating the value of your offer throughout every single section. You really want to make the next step feel frictionless. The structure of your landing page will differ if you're B2B versus B2C. For B2C, your focus should really be on having a strong hook and powerful imagery of your product, lots of social proof and value prop sections, very seamless from top to bottom and really guiding the user. For B2B, you're selling trust, credibility, and results. And so your landing page should really focus on having lots of value prop sections and social proof sections, really focusing on case studies and building thought leadership and credibility, and having a super frictionless way to actually contact you. I recommend using a prototyping tool called Figma where you can basically map out the design of your landing page before you even enter the development phase. We already have a proven high converting landing page framework that we use for all of our projects for both B2B and e-com. I'll put a link in the description below. For developing your page, you can use a variety of different tools ranging from WordPress to Go High Level to Unbounce or Framer. These are all tools that we also use at our agency. Step number two is nailing the above the fold. This is the topmost section of any landing page and it is the only section that statistically 60% of users will never even scroll past, but 100% of your users will guarantee to see it. The biggest mistake I see every single day is having generic headlines that are vague, they use jargon that have no meaning whatsoever, and the biggest conversion sin of all time, which is simply just explaining what it is they do, which is a complete waste of space. I can literally pull up hundreds of examples like these, and it's absolutely killing your conversions, and I cannot believe that people are actually running ads to these, they're literally just wasting money down the drain. The only thing you need in your headline is why should I care? That's all people care about at the end of the day. I want you to really put yourself in the shoes of your users and just think what is that one hard hitting benefit that would make my user say, take my money. When you look at these landing pages, the headline immediately hooks you and gives you an actual compelling incentive to reach out about their service or purchase their product. The best headlines in my experience when doing A-B tests at our agency are the headlines that focus on quantifying the value through the form of numbers and statistics, but they also focus on communicating the time frame in which somebody can expect to receive results. After your headline, your sub headline gives you the chance to explain who you are and what it is you do to achieve the results that you just mentioned in your headline. Don't neglect this part. Really focus your sub headline on what your USP is and what makes your product or service actually different from other competitors in the market. Another big 
mistake that not enough people talk about enough is tightening up your above the fold space such that you're able to display a lot of information up front without overwhelming users. There is no need for massive blocks of white space and massive images that take up so much unnecessary space. This is absolutely killing your conversions. You don't want to have to make people scroll for information that should already be at the top. This landing page is very poor because of how much space the image and header navigation is taking up. Same thing with these examples on the B2B side. Look at how much white space there is that is not necessary whatsoever. Tighten up that space and really focus on fitting as much information as possible without again overwhelming your users. We've easily seen 60 to 80% lifts in conversions from just this one change alone for both our B2B SaaS and e-commerce clients. The fundamental conversion principles that you need to fit above the fold on both desktop and mobile is ideally two forms of social proof, an image or video that reinforces your value prop, a clear benefit driven and large call to action button, and also having reduction of FUDs, which are fear, uncertainty, doubts. So things like money back guarantee, free trials, etc. Here's a before and after incorporating all of these principles that we did for a web development bootcamp in the education space that led to a 132% increase in qualified leads. Or this transformation that we did for our e-commerce client that led to a whopping 64% increase in conversions and a 72% increase in the revenue per visitor. Step number three is creating the full landing page. Lots of people get bogged down into what the design of their landing page should look like and how they should map out every single section. When you've built a lot of landing pages over time, such as myself, and doing tons of audits every single day, you quickly start to realize what works and what doesn't. That's why we have a proven high converting landing page framework that we follow for any project and it saves us a huge chunk of time. By no means is this 100% perfect and no two landing pages are ever the same because every client and every audience is always different. But as far as structure is concerned, this is by far the fastest way and a literal cheat code for you to save a massive chunk of time in planning the design of your landing page. Some other big takeaways is that the headline for every section of your landing page should communicate the benefit in the headline itself. I always tell people that statistically, people will only read 20% of the content on your landing page. The other 80%, they just scan. Imagine the framework in which somebody only reads the headlines on your landing page alone. Is the benefit and value prop clear in just the headline itself? Here's a B2B example where no one has any idea of what this company does or what their actual benefit is of their product or service just by reading the headlines alone. Now compare that to this where every headline is focused on that end benefit that is derived that people can expect and why people should care in the first place in the headline itself. Each of the sections throughout your landing page should have a CTA button so that somebody can convert at any stage of the user journey no matter where they are in the funnel. Even if you have your CTA button in the top navigation, doesn't matter, you need to keep your buttons top of mind and in front of people at all times. For B2B, your contact section should follow this proven layout that we've A-B tested a ton, which is having one benefit-driven headline that communicates why should I fill out the form today, not having contact us or get started or let's talk. People already know they're on the contact page. So one benefit-driven headline, three to four additional benefit selling points, followed by social proof at the point of form entry, and a very seamless process of filling out the form from top to bottom, all vertically stacked. For e-commerce, you should really focus on guiding the user from top to bottom on what they need to do in order to add a product to their cart and also give them immediate feedback when something's been added to their cart through the form of a sliding cart drawer. Step number five is to constantly optimize and test your landing page. These are a few resources you can use. Resource number one is Microsoft Clarity. This is a completely free tool that you can install on your landing page where you can actually watch recordings of users on your website or landing page. You can see exactly where people scroll, where they click, and a ton of other insights. The possibilities are literally endless as far as the improvements that you can make from this data. Resource number two is UserBrain. Microsoft Clarity will tell you where people click, but it doesn't tell you why. UserBrain solves this by actually letting you interview your customers and basically asking them, what are your first impressions upon landing on this page? Can you go through the process of actually adding to cart or filling out this form on our page? And you're basically collecting your direct customer feedback where you can set up screening questions. So you're just targeting your exact ICP. These recordings can be anywhere from 20 minutes long to as long as one hour plus, and it's direct feedback from your customers. It's only $45 per tester, and all you really need is three to five tests to collect the vast majority of insights and patterns. Resource number three, Okendo surveys. For our e-commerce clients, we set up product friction surveys where we're basically
basically asking people what stopped you from almost buying today or what stopped you from filling out a form if you're a B2B or SaaS business. We also set up post-purchase surveys where we're basically asking people after they've purchased a product or filled out a form, what motivated them to buy today? What almost stopped you from buying today? Were there any fear or uncertainties when you were going through our landing page? It always surprises clients the insights we discovered through these surveys. And we have some additional bonus tips. One of the most important techniques for your landing page that's a bit more advanced and a bit more tricky, but once you figure it out, it's an absolute game changer. It's called visual hierarchy. This is basically the art of guiding users' attentions and the flow of information using things like size, colors, fonts, weights, etc. For example, here is a page that is the exact opposite of what you should be doing. There's no visual hierarchy established whatsoever. Compare that to this example where there's a clear flow of information from top to bottom and based on the elements that we actually want to emphasize, those stand out. Compared to the elements that we want to emphasize less, those are way more subtle. Lastly, one of my favorite mindset tips that you should always employ when designing your landing page is to think of it like a salesperson. When someone clicks on an ad or they search for a term on Google, they will not be immediately sold and this is what a lot of brands fail to realize and then they wonder why their campaigns are not converting. The job of the ad or the search result is to just get the click, but the job of the landing page is to then do the selling. Any good salesperson will always understand their prospect's pain point and what they're going through and acknowledge that and then paint their product or service as a solution to those pain points or problems. Your landing page should do the exact same thing where you're really focused on acknowledging the pain points or problems that your prospects are facing and then you're focusing on having lots of social proof and value prop sections further down the page to establish credibility and make people understand why you are the best choice. Now I'm only able to make this video because I built a ton of landing pages over my time and done a ton of landing page and website audits. I've basically memorized all of the elements of how to create a great landing page. So if you're interested, you can click here for the next video where I basically take on a challenge to create a million dollar landing page for a real business in real time, all condensed in under 20 minutes. If you're keen on building a killer landing page, I'll see you over there.